Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. This is your ortho module or for, of fourth year MBBS and community medicine lecture. And we are starting occupational health. So this is the first lecture, which gives you introduction about occupational health. Later, we will cover other occupational diseases in next coming lectures. So you have to pay attention for community medicine in fourth year as you will be having your Viva OSPI exam for this subject in fourth year. So today's lecture ob objectives are that you should be able to define what is occupational health, what are various types of occupational hazards and occupational diseases associated with these hazards, and what is ergonomics, and how you apply preventive and control measures for occupational diseases. So what is occupational health definition? This, is, this definition is given by International Labor Organization that occupational health is the promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of physical, mental, and social well-being of workers in all occupation by preventing departures from health, controlling risks, and adaptation of work to people and people to their jobs. So you know the definition of health. Definition of health also defined that it's a physical, mental, social well-being, not merely the absence of disease without disease or infirmity. So you, this definition of health will op apply to occupational health as well. So you can remember by this way. Other definition is it may be defined as the study of the effect of work and working environment on the health of worker and also the effect of the worker's health status on his or capability to carry out the work for which he, she is employed. So it's a two way that a worker needs a healthy environment for his work and occupation related environment, environment needs a healthy worker as well. So what are various occupational diseases? We will go into detail, but Occupational disease is any disease contracted primarily as a result of exposure to risk factor arising from work activity. For example, we are all healthcare workers. So we have exposures of health work related exposures. There are so many expo exposures. If you can identify, you can list that being in healthcare profession, what are the risks? associated and what are the diseases we can encounter. So occupation hazards is a source by which we can get occupational diseases. That is the risk factors. And these risk factors ca cause injury, harm, damage to workplace, environment, and combination of these. So by now, we have done with the occupational health definition occupational diseases, what are the diseases and what are the sources of occupational diseases that is called occupational hazards or risk factors. Now, this is the famous epidemiological triangle host agent and environment, which you have in your earlier classes gone through that what is the host agent and environment. Now we will apply this on how in occupational environment, this can be applied. So host is worker and family. And agent is workplace hazard. Either you are working in textile, healthcare industry, or any factory, which is uh, maybe a cement factory, or any uh, kind of factory where we can have multiple uh, health hazards or exposure or risk factors. So these will be agent. Environmental factors are the external factors. For example, a worker is working in a textile industry. So textile industry has got an environment which should be 
a perfect environment in which he she can work in a, in a healthy environment so what can be the external factors for uh, textile in industry naturally the whole um, yeah, you can see the factory then the rooms where machines are installed and the uh, people are cutting sewing the various kinds of clothes so their posture maybe or ventilators or exhaust or there will be a dust which has to be a um, outlet so that it can it cannot affect the uh, occupational worker so then this in this way you can apply this uh, whole stage and an environment triangle why we are doing it because so that we can apply prevention level and we can prevent uh, the diseases for example host has to take certain certain measures preventive measures preventive measures in terms of clothing in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, wearing mask and different uh, different protective measures uh, one can take and this host will take the dust particles to the family as well so uh, it is clear that the host or individual should take preventive measures proper clothing and he she should change the clothing at workplace or properly clean it wear mask helmets or whatever kind of uh, preventive appliances which is required different for different uh, i can say in occupation so agent could be different it could be dust particle people work in mines so there are different uh, kind of you can say exposures and over environment is overall uh, health of the working uh, working environment or you can say the area at which these workers are providing or working job and uh, providing their skills to the uh, factory or owners so these are the occup occupational health hazards so you can see the list of you can see the list types of occupational hazards these can be physical these can be biological these can be chemical see or psychosocial which are again an important hazards we can see one by one what are physical hazards so you all know that it's a temperature it could be excessive heat or heat or cold illumination noise vibration radiation and atmospheric pressures so now we can see the example of occupational diseases so occupational skin diseases can occur due to occupational hazards a skin disorder that arises out of contact with an irritant or sensitizing agent encountered in the work environment so you all have done with the uh, practicals in for chemistry uh, you come across with irritant or acids so one can have this and you can you can uh, take the example of the workers who uh, continuously work in factories and deal with these uh, chemical agents or irrit irritants or most of the time they are not taking any preventive measures rather they uh, do not provided by the uh, authorities uh, the protective measures and they are working without taking protective measures and easily they can contact skin diseases occupational hearing loss so noise noise is a is an uh, environmental hazard so the normal conversation we can have approximately 70 decibel of noise which we can tolerate if it goes beyond 80 decibel 
then it has crossed the limits of according to this osha that is occupational safety has uh, as its association and uh, the limits they have set is that it should not exceed to more than 85 decibel if someone is in a place of uh, working with with such an exposure of noise level then he she can come across various uh, ear related issues so oh, and one can be hearing loss so if you have visited any factory um, where you can see that the noise level of machines is so much that the co continuous exposure can cause the damage to uh, hair or hearing loss now what diseases can occur due to physical agents heat can cause heat hyperparesia heat exhaustion heat syncope cramps burns and prickly heat cold can cause frost frost bite you all know that and excessive light can cause cataract which is a eye disease atmospheric pressure kaizen disease you all know that it uh, divers can come across where atmospheric pressure is not maintained air embolism and explosions occupational deafness you have just seen that excessive noise can cause hearing loss radiation can cause cancer leukemia aplastic anemia pancytopenia electricity cause burn shocks this is a brief list and there is there are many uh, disorders which can occur due to this occupational Uh, hazards or physical chemical biological and psychosocial risk factors can cause various occupational diseases now chemical hazards these are all listed uh, metals aromatic hydrocarbons aliphatic hydrocarbons gases and various types of uh, poisoning due to gases or metals so these are all examples of chemical hazards which and uh occupational uh, worker can come across so common common is you know that uh, farmers deals with uh, pesticides and uh, you can name it there are so many examples and the agents are listed here and these are responsible for causing various occupational diseases now this is important we have a separate lecture on uh, pneumoconiosis that is a lung disease caused by dust particles so dust can be classified into organic dust and inorganic dust organic dust includes cane fiber dust cotton dust tobacco dust grain dust and inorganic dust you all know that coal dust silica and asbestos so if you think for a moment that all these inorganic and organic dusts are related to various occupation for example coal miners can come across with anthracosis this is the disease due to coal dust silic silicosis again a lung disease asbestosis again causes lung disease or lung cancer due to silica and asbestos dust cane fiber causes bagasosis in uh, sugarcane industries the uh, end product is cause bagas which affects uh, bronchi and lung and bisinosis is a disease which occurs in textile workers and it's due to cotton dust and uh, to tobacco sources tobacco dust can cause lung cancer and grain dust can cause farmers lung so this is important and in next lecture we will go in detail about pneumoconiosis and dust related diseases this is the spectrum of occupational lung disease how it affects the respiratory uh, tract and first when it uh, when a person inhales causes rhinitis and laryngitis and then um, it can uh, reaches to trachea bronchitis bronchiolitis then it reaches to small bronchioles causing asthma chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and for uh, when a person can 
uh, have a prolonged exposure due to work related environment it can lead to cancer and interstitial diseases autoimmune diseases now this is the picture of silicosis which is due to silica dust you can see that there are prominent alveolar filling with eosinophilic proteinaceous material mild interstitial thickening is also present so and another picture showing the progressive massive fibrosis again due to various dust which causes lungs uh, which affects lung in various form causing bronchitis or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and cancer you can see that the lower zones are hyper inflated and you all know that uh, silica dust is in which industries ship breaking industry which is uh in karachi gadani if people have visited to there there is uh, ship breaking and uh, some major source of silica dust and if protective measures are not taken uh, the workers can have a silicosis disease which affects lung so occupational lung disease how do we define it repeated exposure to airborne particles chemicals vapors or gases that results in various diseases involving lungs pneumoconiosis asbestosis and silicosis just reemphasis so that you can remember what are various occupational lung diseases occupational skin diseases we have just gone through it so in construction related industry where people are involved in construction work the hazards could be wood dust metallic dust asbestos sand blasting various gases fumes and getting oils so you can see here that the this person has taken all preventive protective measures but he can have more on um, he can wear gloves or maybe a, a little environment related things where exhaust or ventil proper ventilation can be seen so all these measures can prevent occupational diseases now comes the occupational blood disorders and diseases which is health related or healthcare worker face can face these diseases on repeated exposure to harmful chemicals or blood borne diseases that result in a chronic blood disorders or diseases so the nursing staff healthcare staff doctors while dealing with the patient can have needle prick injuries while operation they can come encounter with blood and blood related products and exposure to <clears throat> hepatitis hiv heavy metal poisoning aplastic anemia lead poisoning and mercury poisoning so all these are related to blood uh, disorder and diseases and it these are related to various occupation especially healthcare uh, providers should take care of these Uh, occupational exposures now who is at risk mercury uh, hazard mercury which is used in dental fillings and thermometers you all know that so it causes uh, mercury poisoning arsenic again a pesticide or in some areas in well water it is found so arsenic poisoning is a common one uh, then comes the mercury Uh, how fish gets mercury it's it come into the food chain because in heavy uh, heavy industrial waste which is discarded into the river and sea then the fish came in uh, into cross with this uh, um, heavy uh, waste which includes mercury so when people ate this fish they can have mercury uh, mercury poisoning and uh, it's a famous uh, history if you know or google that mena mata disease where lots of uh, serious morbidity and mortality due to this uh, mercury poisoning they add fishes which is contaminated with the mercury then comes the plastic which we all come across not so the workers which are working in on plastic industries we all are 
exposed to these kinds of things. A major hazard is cadmium, that is pigments and plastic production, and this leads to serious occupational disorders. So pharmaceuticals, uh, work, people working in pharmaceuticals can come across with different kinds of metals and while manufacturing the drugs. Printing hazards is cadmium pigments and lead, which is related to printing. Biological hazards are common and again, being a healthcare provider, uh, you should know these that bacteria, viruses, protozoa and parasitic infection, fungi and uh, agriculture workers can come across with all these uh, things. So you will know uh, when you study parasitic diseases, how they occur, how they can be prevented, uh, the viral diseases and bacterial diseases uh, you have gone through in your communicable diseases. So all should have to take preventive measures at individual level, at family level, at organization level where an individual works and it's the organization responsibility to provide a protective environment to the workers. So in next coming slides, we will deep that what are the legislation related to it and what how we can apply preventive strategies. So mechanical hazards could be injuries due to fall, cuts, abrasions, concussion, contusions, ergon ergonomic disor disorders. And what is ergonomics? This is your important to viva or speak questions as well as it can be asked in your MCQs one best type. So what is ergonomic? Adjustment of man, man and machine. So remember just that it's a mutual adjustment of man and his work. That machine design fit to work. So the job is like that it is fit to the worker. So adjustment of man and machine. Ergonomics is defined as application of biological sciences with engineering sciences to achieve optimum mutual adjustment of man and his work the benefit being measured in terms of human efficiency and well-being. So all the tools, all the uh, work-related instruments which are applied in any industry or any workplace should be according to the need of the worker. For example, just I am in sitting in office in front of computer, so I have a, I have a proper uh, screen distance, proper posture while sitting and working on computer. So if if anyone works for certain hours in bad posture or in uh, uh, not a, uh, a, uh, available or allowed distance from the screen or the person in front of a screen, then it, it, it can cause various uh, musculoskeletal disorders or cumulative traumatic disorders. So these are the disorders which are related to ergonomics and ergonomics in the biological and engineer sci engineering science, which made the working environment fit to his workers. Okay. Now principles of control of workplace hazards. This is all if you have studied planning cycle, this is similar for all that what you do is First, you have to identify the exposure as we have gone through a list that it, it is it a chemical exposure, biological exposure or a physical agent or psychosocial factor. So once you have identified the risk factors, now you can take preventive measures again against the specific risk factor. Then what we do that we will try to eliminate that exposure or substitute that exposure or enclose or separate or vaccinate. So how we can eliminate the exposure, for example, if, uh, if uh, for example, lead or cadmium or any uh, uh, exposure is, is responsible for causing the workplace hazard. So we can, uh, uh, we try to eliminate it. If we can't eliminate it, then we have to find a proper substitute of it. So we can substitute with other less harmful uh, exposure. For example, uh, we all take uh, 
petrol and it is full of lead and other ha hazardous exposure so what we can do is we can take lead free petrol which is uh, friendly to the environment as well so similarly uh, there are there are certain um, uh, cost effective uh, substitutes which, which can be taken but unfortunately people do not care about it or if this cannot be eliminated or substituted then should there should be a proper uh, mechanism for prevention or that it causes less harm to the persons who come across with this uh, with the risk factors for the agents for example all the healthcare workers should have uh, vaccination of hepatitis b and whatever vaccine is av available for any uh, kind of diseases one should have uh, proper vaccination uh, while working and in the environment where the risk fac factors or hazards can take place so this is the basic principles that one should identify control and then evaluate that whatever measures is applied sub uh, risk factors substituted eliminated or persons are vaccinated uh, either these strategies are helpful in eliminating the problem is evaluation what is evaluation that either that you have made a objective that you have to you are uh, you are supposed to provide protective environment in certain x y in industry then you have made certain objectives now in evaluation you have you will be evaluating that either you have achieved your objective or not right so if you remember plan do check and act is an is an uh, quality enhancement or cycle where one can have Uh, that quality um, services are provided in which uh, you identify the problem you plan you implement and then you evaluate that what was the problem and you are you successful in evaluating these problems so then who will do it naturally there should be a legislation on the working industry so the authority the administration authority of the workplace and workers these are the two major stakeholders workers should have their responsibilities and authorities should fulfill their responsibilities now the again this is important and you all know but who is taking Uh, preventive measures either by knowing so we all know but we do not practice it so there is a proper mechanism that how do we lift weight and lifting weight in a proper position can avoid many injuries for example back injuries so there is a straight back rule which is that thinking before lifting right so while one is lifting certain weight so he should or he she should think before lifting that what posture i need to adopt that can minimize uh, and minimize in causing injury many workers are involved in uh, daily uh, in lifting weights so control any risk by reducing necessity for manual handling by using alternative means of handling remember we have uh, just gone through the substitution said so what is the substitution we can provide here so we can take appropriate measures or helpful devices which can minimize load on workers so while 
manual handling handling and avoiding back injuries one should consider the load size and awkward shape consider need for mechanical and or or manual assistance positions leg apart one foot level with the load keep back straight and look up so these are certain things but who will taught this to occupational workers so this is the job of the authorities that apart from taking uh periodic checkups of pre periodic uh, health checkups they should also train time to time their workers with uh, or dealing all these mechanics so again uh, it is in continuation that how one should lift the weight that bending avoid twisting and how they can uh, they can lift properly weight these are the guidelines ergonomics just you have gone through what that what is ergonomics so what is ergonomics that the job is according to the need of the worker all the machines tools uh an environment is fit to the workers so seating positions seat height to be adjusted so that thighs are horizontal and feet are resting flat on the floor thighs torso angle is not less than 90 degree and 100 degrees as preferable chair should be, have a backrest with support for curvature in lumbar area so natural s, s curvature of the spine you can see here so how many of you are taking care you all have uh, adopting a seating position while studying or working on computers laptops so be careful so this is the working posture wrist and forearm held in a straight line to reduce tendon and nerve stress upper and lower arm at 90 degree angle elbows to be kept close to the sides head screen distance how much a head crease a head screen distance should be 25 to 48 inches right optimal viewing angle is 20 degree below the horizontal lines from the eyes so one should have a good or adequate working posture while sitting again vision and lighting is an important thing a screen to be placed 90 90 degrees to the light source adjust screen angle use a screen filters to reduce glare screen intensity needs to be adjusted frequent breaks from the screen to reduce stress on eyes change position stretch or walk around if feeling tiredness light touch on keyboards to reduce hand stress for the de developing connective tissue disorders look at optical illusion for 1 to 2 minutes after every 20 minutes of work with to reduce eye stress rotate eyeball and also concentrate on a distant object and near object alternatively to reduce eye stress keep the screen and eye glass clean so these are the ergonomics guidelines providing provided to the workers or any individuals who is involving for prolonged sitting postures now the last but not the least is psychosocial hazards and it is um related to every occupation how can it occurs what are the risk factors what are the causes so these are certain researches has identified that lack of job satisfaction psychological and behavioral changes and psychosomatic disorders stress causing hypertension headaches body aches ulcers asthma diabetes and sometimes heart disorders depression anxiety uh sickness um, absent absenteeism uh, insecurity poor interpersonal relations work pressures ambiguity all once once a while every worker has gone through these uh, hazards so these needs to be taken into account now we come to types of control measures we have studied the def definitions of occupational occupational diseases and we have studied the sources hazards risk factors and diseases various kinds of various diseases 
now we can how we know that how can we apply control measures so there are medical measures there are engineering measure, measures and administrative or legal measures in medical measures required to monitor effectiveness of engineering controls for example in an industry there are machines so in uh, engineering uh, proper uh, working of the machine and again it has to be fit to the worker and medical uh, measures that is periodic health che health checkup of a worker pre employment examinations and treatment of diseases if a workers encounter and engineer has engineering control is to reduce ex exposure not only to reduce the exposure but also making sure that all machines are um, are updated and not harmful to the workers or the working environment administrative or legal measures emphasis given to reduce the exposure but there should be a thorough check uh, so that the legal actions can be taken those who are not following the uh, proper ergonomics guidelines engineering controls can be designing building workstation wood house keeping ventilation mechanization substitution and closure isolation local exhaust ventilation personal protective devices work environment monitoring and statistical monitoring so there are few like personal protective devices uh, it is the responsibility or responsibility of the authority or the owner of the industry or factory that these uh, protective measures should be provided to the worker and it is the responsibility of the worker to follow and take uh, preventive measures and th these are all environmental related factor remember we have in the beginning we have uh, studied the triangle host agent and environment so these are external environment factors that is the design of the building workstation ventilation mechanization and these are the measures which can be taken to control the occupational hazards that is the substitution or isolation so there is a uh, adequate list and these are all important things how can a statistical monitoring be done that uh, whenever a periodic health checkup is done from the baseline uh, health checkup that is the pre employment and treatment of the diseases so, so it should be uh, monitored through research now this is the world health organization global plan of action on workers who's work on occupational health and this is uh, started in uh, from 2008 to 2017 this action plan was taken and uh, discussed in world health assembly and what else this is called for improving the diagnosis reporting and registration of occupational diseases and building capacities for estimating the occupational burden of diseases so this was started and uh there are legislation made that they should make sure that the working environments or uh, owner of the industries should be responsible and they should be penalized or legal actions can be taken against them, them when this plan is made and implemented so who is doing it ilo is a international level organization osha we have uh, seen in previous slide that occupational safety hazards uh, organization which is working and fighting for the occupational health related diseases of the workers so who activities regarding occupational and work related diseases include carrying our estimates of global burden of disease from major occupational risks such as injuries airborne exposures carcinogens ergonomics stressors noise and other specific substances 
and this is the major major breakthrough that in uh, international classification of diseases occupational related diseases or problems are incorporated ilo has uh, developed a diagnostic and exposure criteria for occupational diseases and to enable primary and secondary healthcare providers to detect and report such diseases so primary healthcare uh, should be at place of every uh, work, working environment so that timely uh, early detection of occupational disease can be made and proper uh, measures can be taken or if there is treatment is needed it should be provided timely occupational health deals with all aspects of health and safety in the workplace and has a strong focus on primary prevention of hazards so primary prevention is vaccination or uh, taking uh, personal protective measures when disease has not occurred so so this is the major major um, action which has to be taken both uh, workers and the uh, authorities i mean the employers and employees both the health of the workers has several determinants including risk factors at the workplace leading to all uh, diseases which we have studied earlier that is cancer accidents musculoskeletal disorders respiratory diseases hearing loss circulatory diseases stress related disorders and communicable diseases etc employment and working conditions in the formal and informal economy embrace other important determinants including working hours salary workplace policies concerning maternity leaves health promotion and protection provisions so these are all important areas which needs to be taken and in many places these are uh, implemented after this uh, who framework for occupational uh, legal implementation and uh, administration which was uh, taken the decisions and implemented so our textbook is public health community medicine elias reference book is park there are various uh, who uh, related documents uh, for occupational health which can, you can find on who websites that is www.who.int so uh, if you time to time you have to see this website who not only for, for occupational health but for other uh, you can see areas major areas all are listed and update is there because your textbooks have um, statistical data but uh, whenever this book is published so uh, it should it can it could be a little uh, outdated so updated information can be found on who websites so we have a um, small uh, video uh, just to recap this uh, lecture of occupational diseases and hazards i can request the host that this can be uh, run uh, let's see and you can write your question in your chat box and uh, uh, if you come across any question later my email is here nigar.nisar@thedateofdhs.edu.pk you can write because we are having online classes otherwise uh, you can come into community medicine department and clear your queries ji if if there are any questions if you do not have any ji ji ho rahi hai okay, chal rahi hai okay 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 ma'am
now you can see the alternative methods Okay, ji, thank you so much. Uh, I do not see any questions in chat box. So I don't know people are sleeping or listening to lecture. Those who have attended actively, I hope that it's clear. Again, you if you have any query, please email. ठीक है तारिक साहब फिर खत्म करें लेक्चर ओके मैम ओके जी थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑल